we didn't get a bid into the NCAA. You know, having an RPI of 31, just, I mean, how disappointing was that? You know, it, it was very disappointing to us, I think, as a, as a staff, as a team, uh, the disappointment set in. But we had the opportunity to kind of seal the deal in the last weekend, and we have to, you know, you have to learn from those you got to take a lesson from from the fact that when you have a chance to seal something, you got to you got to go out and you got to make it happen. And and uh, I didn't want anybody feeling sorry for us or feeling sorry for ourselves. Even though we didn't make the tournament, it was still a great season. You know, what are your general thoughts on on how your team performed? I think the word that I used a lot for this team was just the resiliency that we had. Uh, you look at some of the things that we were able to accomplish. Uh, you know, that had never beaten LSU in a series. Uh, we're, we take a game from Vanderbilt when they're the hottest team in the country and you know the, the success that we've had with Vanderbilt over the you know we were 500 going into this year against Vanderbilt and had never won at Vanderbilt before that but uh, what this team was capable of doing and and uh, we were able to protect our home environment uh, our, our series that we played here we played very well uh, we were we were 500 in conference series you know we were 5-4-1 and one in conference series and and uh, that's a huge step, uh, I think, for our program. Uh, the players that, that we're continuing to churn out uh, and, you know, whether they're going to, at the next level to play professional baseball or whether they're going out into the real world and, and getting jobs. I mean, I'm just so proud of the, the, every, everybody on this roster I'm really proud of. We had eight seniors that are, you know, getting ready to head off to different things and, and they're just great young men. Speaking of the next level, the MLB draft is coming up next week. Um, obviously, TJ Sikama um, is a huge draft prospect, Cameron Meisner. Um, what can you say about just those two um, as players and just the legacy that they've been able to kind of leave behind here at Mizzou? Yeah, I mean, both TJ and Cameron are, are special players. And I think even more so than that is, is, you know, they came in the same time that I came in and we've kind of built that, those relationships and, and, you know, we talk about uh, when we first came in that, that we're going to be builders of the program and, and that's everybody that was here in year one that we're going to continue to make this program better. We're going to continue to do things right. And those guys were just two great examples of how you go about your business every day, how, how you take care of things in the classroom, you take care of everything in the community. And, and outside of here, but then when they show up to the field, uh, there's nobody on the pitching staff that works harder than TJ Sikama. There's nobody uh, on the position player side that works harder than Cameron Meisner. And that's, we need great examples like that, you know, to, to build where we are now, but we need that to continue to happen. And, and uh, just really proud of those guys and also proud of, you know, what's getting ready to happen, you know, hopefully on both for both of those guys on June 3rd. Switching gears just a little bit, um, obviously a tornado ripped through Jeff City um, last week. You guys did not hesitate to the next day get out in the community and, and help with cleanup. Um, why was that so important for you to get your team out there and, and helping? Yeah, it, one of the building blocks of our program is, you know, just uh, it's service. And, uh, you know, we want to be good in the classroom, but we want to we be servants of not just baseball, but you know, in the community and doing that. And, and it was really cool that, you know, Coach Fatty immediately sent out the, uh, the text to our team. And the first guy to reply to that was TJ Sikama and says, I'm in. And, and when I read that, it was kind of, you know, that, that's special to know that, you know, your number one guy on the pitching staff that's getting ready to pitch, you know, on Friday uh, in a huge regional game, uh, he's more interested in helping others than he is to, to get to the weight room and get himself ready because he knew he still had time for that. But uh, that's something that we take a lot of pride in and we want everybody in our program to feel that, uh, you know, the more you give, the more you get. How amazing was that to be able to go down and, and even though, you know, the cleanup will continue to happen for months down the road, but to, to know that you guys had a part in helping, you know, kind of pick up the pieces. It was kind of tough. They're devastated that uh, you know, these are, this is the, what they look forward to, that their games are going to be wiped out, they're not going to get to play. And, and to think about that, it's just, you know, it, it hurts you a little bit. And, and, and knowing that, you know, what we're doing is just a very small part of just trying to get them back on their feet. But just the encouragement, I think, that they can see from our athletes that know that, that we care, that other people care. And, and uh, you know, the destruction was, you know, it, 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 it it was not easy to see, just knowing that, you know, in that quick of a flash that everything's changed kind of in your world for a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think that it helps. It, you know, I, I truly believe that all the community service and the service that we do, uh, we get more out of it than the people that we're helping. And then that's kind of what, 
why we focus on that part in our program. You know, we are now in the off season, but what are you hoping to be able to maybe work on throughout that off season? You know, what are you hoping the team can kind of learn from, you know, this past season and take it into next year? When you think about the first year, you know, you're a 49 RPI, the next year 47, and then we drop to 31 in year three. There's still a lot of room there for improvement for that number to be cut in half, and, and I do believe that that can happen. Uh, but we have to address some of the things that we came up short on. Uh, we got to continue to get better offensively. Uh, we got to continue to play great defense, and we got to continue to do the things on the mound that we're capable of doing uh, with within that entire staff. And we've got enough coming back on the mound to be very good on the mound again. Uh, but we got to we got to address some of the offensive. You know, being able to score more uh, in those key situations. We played. And I had almost, almost 21 run games this year, and you know a lot of them we came out on top of, but uh, we would like to be able to open up those leads and not always play such high pressure games. Even though the season did just end, just how excited are you to you know, get back out there for next season and improve? It's, it's, a, it's just crazy how coaches think. Immediately your mind shifts to, okay, now what do we have to do? And you start preparing, and, and now you start making your notes, and you start planning for next year, and, and how are we going to get better? So that's really where we're at right now. Uh, you know, I'm in full mode for the 2020 season right now, and, and that's all you can do. You can't dwell on the past, and you know, we can change the future, and that's, the, that's our goal, and that's our plan here at the University of Missouri, and that's where we're headed right now. Presented by MU Healthcare, Mid-Missouri's only academic health center, where yes finds a way.